Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture. This is covering Unit 4, Energy. This is Conservation of Energy, Part 1. And conservation of Mechanical Energy. We kind of already have done a lot of this during the unit, but I now want to give you a lesson to clarify a lot of information. So, what is Conservation of Energy? It states that the energy initial is going to be equal to the energy final. That means the potential plus kinetic initial is going to be equal to the potential plus kinetic final. In other words, the equation says the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy for any state of the system at any point is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy at an other state at any other point in that system as long as the system is closed. The textbook definition will say if only conservative forces do work, the total mechanical energy of a system neither increases or decreases any process. It stays consistent. It is conserved. In the AP Physics test and exam, it says it in different ways. So these are the different ways you can hear conservation of mechanical energy on the AP Physics 1 exam. 1. The system is closed because there is no net force exerting on the block or object or mass. The mechanical energy of the system does not change. The work done by the system is zero. W equals to change in kinetic energy equals to zero. Let's look at a traditional problem that covers a good idea of conservation of mechanical energy. A 200 kilogram roller coaster cart is on a frictionless track and assume no air resistance. One, what is the system? You have to say cart and earth because Earth gives you the potential energy of MGH. Two, is the system open or closed? We would say the system is closed because it is on a frictionless track and there is no air resistance. So the only work, the only forces in here are conservative. Also, you can say any of these other three. How much energy does the system have point A? Well, at any point, the system is made up of kinetic versus potential, mgh plus one half mv squared. You plug in the values, you would get 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules. This is how much energy it has at point A. How much energy does it have now at point B? Explain. You don't have to calculate anything. You know that it's going to be 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules at any point because the system is closed. Based on the conservation of mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy of a system neither increases or decreases in any process. It stays constant. It is conservative. So what is the object speed at point B? Well, you have to just set up the potential energy. We know at that point at B, it's only 1.25 times 10 to the fourth is equal to one half mv squared. This was the original energy. That's the reason why it's 1.25 times 10 to the fourth. Now it equals to one half mv squared just to connect energy. There is a plus ug, but is there any potential energy at point B? No, it's technically zero because the height is zero. Do we write it? No. So this is why this equation is created. If you plug in the values and solve, you would get V equals to 11.2 meters per second squared. The velocity has to be faster because here it has a lot of velocity because all the UG got transferred to kinetic at this moment. So five, can the cart make it up to point C? Well, at this point, we know that it has 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules of energy. At this point, it has 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules of energy. We have to see if 1.25 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules of energy can make it up here. So let's say at point C, the energy is U plus K. At that point, there is no kinetic energy at the top, but we know the height is equal to eight meters. Plug it in. We saw that the energy here is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. 
but we only have 1.25 times 10 to the fourth. The fact that the cart only has 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules, therefore it does not have enough energy to make it up to point C. To make it up to point C, you need 1.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. What height should point C be so that it barely makes it over? So you want to look at the height. So we know that 1.25 times 10 to the fourth is the total possible amount of energy that the system has. And we know that at any moment, it can be transferred to potential, which is MGH. So that's why you said equal to MGH and solve for H. You have M, you have G. So multiply them and divide them over. We saw that height is going to be equal to 6.25. In this case, it is meters. The roller coaster can only be 6.25 meters high, so the roller coaster could barely make it over. Six. All right. Next question. It has this. All right. We saw mathematically that if the height is 6.25, the roller coaster barely makes it over. That's what we just did. So here are two short answer questions. Jose Manuel is a civil engineer designed to follow the measurement in the last problem. He saw that H is equal to 6.25 meters. He tears down the roller coaster at point C and makes the height 6.25. After six months of construction, the first managers on the ride got on and they couldn't make over it over on point C. Explain. Some of you will say, oh, he never considered mass. Mass doesn't matter, guys. Remember, the formula is... Uh, u plus k equals to u plus k, right? This is the initial, initial, final, final. mgh plus one half mv squared is equal to mgh plus one half mv squared. Notice mass is in all of them. So technically mass cancels out in all of them. So does mass really matter? No. So what was wrong? Well, there was an assumption that we made in this problem. At the start, we assume that the, the system was closed. In the real world, the system is not closed. The system will lose a bit of energy due to some of the gravitational potential energy of the system being converted into thermal. So as it goes from the top down, it heats up. Energy is leaving the cart. Remember, it needs to have 1.25 times 10 to the fourth. Any energy less, it cannot go over 6.25 height. So even if it was a little bit, thermal was lost, it can't make it over 6.25 meters height. So what suggestion can you make to Jose Manuel to fix this issue? Remember, you cannot reconstruct the roller coaster because the company has no more money or time, but you can add things. Well, you can do add one thing. You can't add a rocket. You, there's no engine source. But there's one more source of mechanical energy you can add. It is actually a spring launcher. So at the start here, you can actually add a spring, right? A spring launcher that will shoot like that the roller coaster can be compressed and shot up. If you add a source of potential energy at the start of the ride, like a spring launcher, that will cover convert the spring potential energy into more kinetic energy. So rather than just have 1.25 times 10 to the fourth joules of energy, we can add the spring here, potential energy. So it's going to be more. Good. Let's look at a traditional AP Physics 1 multiple um, free response question. This comes out of 2015's question. Here you could read the scenario to yourself. But the first question asks, on the axis below, sketch and label the following graph of the two qualities as a function of the position of the block between x equals to 0 and x equals to negative d. You do not need to calculate the values. So the first one is the kinetic energy, and the second one is the potential energy. Okay, so let's do it. Well, I'm going, I'm going to start with the, the, kinetic, uh, the kinetic energy. No, let's start with potential. How about we start with potential? I like that. All right. <clears throat> So potential energy, when it is at D, when it's compressed, okay, when it's compressed, D is when the delta X is compressed, right? So there is going to be some potential energy. So we can start it up here, 
right? There's a lot of UG. As it comes and it hits this, it's going to be zero. It all gets converted, right? So if this is how it is, the inverse would be the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy here starts from zero. And at when the block is right here at x equals to naught, it has its fastest speed. We just have to see how it curves. It is not linearly. Remember, the energy will go up as one half mv squared. So it's going to go up like this. Okay. Likewise, that's how the decay factor of potential energy is going to be like. Right? What happens to the rest? Well, the block goes all the way to 3D. So what happens to the potential energy? Is it increasing, decreasing, or stays zero? Well, it's at zero. It doesn't do anything. So it has to continue and stay at zero until the block's at rest. So if there is no potential at the end, what happens? Well, here, do you see it's on a rough surface? There is friction at this moment. As it goes from friction, right, it has its V max from here. Then once it goes to 3D, it stops. So V equals to zero. So here, X equals to V equals to zero here. So V equals to zero here, right? This is where V max is going to be. How does it decay? Well, this is interesting, right? The decay factor that is happening is due to the work um, of the thermal, right? Which is U, M, G, um, Friction, force of friction is mu n. So this is mu mg. The way it decays is not exponentially. It's actually linearly. So the energy, so I shouldn't write Vmax here, right? Which is true, but I'm just looking at the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy here is going to be decaying linearly. Okay, so I want you to note the kinetic energy will decrease here linearly all right because it's mu mg that's why okay the energy is coming out is due to the force of friction next you want to take a look at the student's reasoning here which aspect of the student's reasoning is correct if any so the student reason that the spring potential energy will be con if compressed twice as much as before, the block will have more energy when it leaves the spring. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, the block will have more energy when it leaves the spring. That's correct because uh, UG is equal uh, potential energy of the spring is equal to one half k delta x squared. Delta x is the compression distance so if you compress it more of course it's going to have more energy which aspect of the student's reasoning is incorrect if any well the student said here the block will have more energy when it leaves the spring it will slide further before coming to a stop that looks good um there is one aspect of it so the they say here, the student said, since the spring will be compressed twice as much, it will slide further along the track before coming to a stop at 60. That is wrong. So the reason why the student saw, so originally here at 1D distance and it went 3D. So the student say if it's at 2D, it's going to go to 6D. So here, the student thought it was proportional. It is not proportional, right? So one over three, the student thought it was also two over three. This is if it's proportional, or in other words, this is when it is linearly, right? This is a linearly um, transformation. You just multiply this by two, right? The scale factors multiply two. So here you would say that that logic makes no sense because the spring energy does not scale linearly when it compresses the sc the spring's energy is actually scaled squaredly so if you do it if so if delta x is now 2d k is going to be four times as much okay then it's going to be four times much k 
The reason why is take a look, one half k delta x is now two delta x, right, squared. Two times two squared becomes four. So you see it's four, one half k delta x squared, right? One half k delta x squared is just the original k, the original energy. So it is four times as much, right? So if you compress the spring twice as much, the system's gonna have four times as much kinetic energy. Last question, use quantitative reasoning, include equations to develop an equation for the new position of the block. Well, it's very straightforward. So I did that math from before, right? The fact that it's gonna be stretched twice as much, it's gonna have four times much as potential energy being converted to kinetic. We set that equal to the work equation, so mu mg, and this is, please understand, <clears throat> um, this is just going to be um, the force times the distance, right? That's what work is, okay? The distance travel is 3D, okay? So you plug it in here, and you will get that the work is going to be done four times as much as before, right? So you set them equal to each other. And you see that if you compare the spring's potential energy with the, when the spring is compressed twice as much, it will have four times as much potential energy as before. That explains the top part, the middle part. Once the object slides on the rough surface, you will need to use work equation because the force of friction is doing work on the block to slow it down. That's block, okay? Here's the work there. Lastly, you would use the force equation of work to compare the situation to solve for the new distance. You would see that now it's going to go for tw um, twice, no, 12 times the distance, okay? Because again, it has four potential energy and the original put energy is 3D, all right? Next, they want to, oh. Explain how any correct aspect of the student's reasoning is correct, right? So here, this was the first part. The block has more energy in the second situation is expressed by that calculation of the initial energy. So we saw that if you compress it twice as much, it's going to have four times as much kinetic energy, right? Or four times as much potential energy converting to kinetic. C, explain how much your, your relationship in part C corrects. So the block will slide further is expressed by the equation of work done by the force of friction to stop the block in the situation. We saw that four factor is greater than the work done in the first situation. Four times 3D, right? It's greater by a factor of four. Refer to your relationship. We just did that, all right? I just want you to understand that the energy scales of the spring's potential is not linearly, it is squared, all right? So this should cover conservation of energy. The first half of this covered a traditional conservation of energy problem. The second half shows how a conservation of energy problem would be like on the AP exam. And this is a publicly released question as well.